Okay, so now we're going to name alkenes, right, using systematic names. Okay, just so you know, first of all, what are systematic names? Is that something, you're probably wondering, oh, Janine, so is this something that just confuses students even more? Well, no, because in chemistry, right, or even in science, we like to be consistent. So depending on where you are in the world, right, we want to have consistent names, and that's why we use the IUPAC, right? So it's I-U-P-A-C, right? So the IUPAC is just a way of naming compounds just so um, chemistry is a universal language, right? So it can be used among scientists across the world. So that's why we use systematic names. And the way we're going to name this, right? So let's draw the structure first in order to solve that. Okay, so because I have a copy of this and apparently the student got it wrong, that's why it got submitted and that's why we're doing this right now. Okay, so there's two compounds, just so you know, and they're actually different. Right. So because I know that you have this right here, so apparently they're saying that this is three methylene hexene. Right. And I'm also drawing the one at the bottom. Right. Just so we're getting this right. OK, so let's just copy whatever we had there. So depending on where you are, right, so in terms of your grade level, so if you're in grade 12, because grade 12 uh, students, they learn about organic chemistry in terms of naming, you're probably used to seeing structural diagrams, which contains the, the physical carbon and hydrogen, as opposed to the line diagrams where you don't really see carbon as much. And this is going to be in black. So we're going to go through the two ways of naming. Okay, maybe I can have this here and I'll copy and draw that. Okay, so this is just for my preference because I wanted to draw the diagram so I can label this. Okay, so the first diagram we have is H3C and this is CH2 and this is CH2 and CH2, then you have CH2, and this is CH3. Okay, so let's move that at the bottom. Okay, and then I'll just copy the next compound just so it's quick. Okay, so interestingly, the second compound right here, you have a bromine group, right? So, so bromine and you have CH2 and then another CH2 then you have double bonded carbon CH3 another CH3 and an H okay okay great so um, for the question I mean sorry for the first question Right. You just have to remember that whenever you're dealing with um, naming, you need to think about your parent chain. You've probably heard of this and you need to think about your branch chain. Right. So first of all, what's a parent chain? So the parent chain would be the longest chain. Right. So when you're counting your carbons, you need to make sure that your parent chain, I emphasize that this is going to be the longest chain. Right. And because we're looking at your priority priority groups, right, which is alkenes, you need to make sure that your double bond would be the first carbon, right? So in that case, when you're counting, right, you're, you're not going to start here just because it's at the end, right? Or this one right here, you're not going to start here because you don't want this and this being the first carbon. Because remember, we have this priority group, which is your alkene group. So that means your first carbon needs to be this carbon. So this is carbon one, right? I'm just going to label that in red so you can follow. So this is carbon one. And by the way, this is the parent chain. So the red one is the parent chain. OK, so this is carbon one. And if you think about it, it's either you go to the left or you go to the right. However, we're going to the left because, as you can see, remember, the parent chain is the longest chain, right? So that means the longest chain would be in this direction to the left. Does that make sense? Because if you count one, two, and then you would have three and four, and then you're you're going to be in short, right? So that so now this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, right? Because this is the longest chain possible if you're counting starting from here. 
Okay, now we've identified what the parent chain is, right? So it's the one in red, and then we need to figure out what are the substituents, right? Or the branch, um, I guess, alkyl groups, right? In this case, because alkyl means it's carbon chains, right? Or R chains. So as you can see in in two, in the second carbon, there's actually a carbon chain that is attached to the second carbon, right? And if you recall about your prefixes or your functional groups, right? You have methyl, which is just one carbon, and you have ethyl, which is two carbons, right? And this is going to be in purple, right? So this is your branch. So you have two carbons, right, in total, right? Because this is one and two. Right? And because they're connected together, right? it's not like this carbon over here is connected to two other carbons, if you know what I mean. right? So I'm talking about the second carbon over here. right? This carbon is just connected to just one carbon and another carbon, right? as opposed to this one, which is separated. right? So that means it's going to be an ethyl group. right? So this is an ethyl group. And this is 2-ethyl, right? Because it's attached to the second carbon, right? And it's ethyl. Okay, let's change the 2 into the red one. Okay, 2. The reason why it's 2 is because it's attached to the second carbon. And you have ethyl because you have two carbons. And they're attached just once, right? As opposed to this one. Because the reason why I'm, I'm emphasizing this is because if you have two carbons, and this is a common mistake, just so you know, um, if you have two carbons, which is, which is attached to just carbon two, right? If it's separate, this would there, therefore be called as two comma two, and this is methyl, right? And the reason why it's two comma two methyl is because this is only composed of, let's say, one carbon, right? So for example, this is CH3, which is the very end, right? There's two carbons, well, in that case, the reason why it's not called 2-ethyl, it's because it's only just one carbon, right, that is attached to carbon 2. Does that make sense? As opposed to this one. Okay, great. So... Okay, so hopefully that was clear um, so far. Okay, so you have two ethyl, so we figured that out. Now we're, we're going to name the parent chain and combining things together, right? So we know that we have this side chain, which is two ethyl. So in that case, if you count, remember the red one, there's actually five carbons, right? So in that case, you would call this pent, right? You're using the prefix pent. Remember penta from your polygons, right? That's five. And then because you have um, one, right? At carbon one, so this is carbon one over here, you have a double bond. That means it's one pentene, right? So this ene -E refers to an alkene, right? Which is a carbon double bond. And when you're naming this, make sure the side chain is in front of your parent chain. So that's why it's two ethyl, one pentene. So that's your name. That's your IUPAC name. Okay, so this is, I believe, far different from what we have, right? Because they wrote 3 methyl -ene hexene, which is wrong. Okay, so that's about it for this question. Now, moving on to this question. Okay, so interestingly, we have a side group, which is bromine, right? So when we have side groups that are halogens, right? Okay, so what's halogens? So halogens are actually found in group seven, right? So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, right? Typically, we don't really have acetine, but if you have a side chain, right, which is, for example, fluorine, in this case, right? You would say fluoro. If it's chlorine, it's chloro. If it's bromine, it's bromo. And if it's iodine, you would name it as iodo, right? So in that case, you would say that this is bromo, right? But before we, you know, like look at the side chains, we need to consider our parent chain. So when we're looking at the, our parent chain, right, it's going to be the longest chain. And on top of that, it's going to be the one that contains the priority group. So in, the, in that case, the priority group would be the double bond, 
right here. So if you're going to look at, I guess, counting starting from here, right, or here, that means when you're counting this, you would have to start over here. So I know that you probably have a tendency to start here, right? You would say this is carbon one, this is two, three, four, right? Because you're probably wondering, so shouldn't we just start carbon one over here because this contains the double bond? Well, no, because you want to have the longest chain, right? So you either start from here or from here. So it's fine that this is carbon two, right? Where you have the double bond, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you have the longest chain, right? So you need to have the longest chain as longest chain as much as you can. And on top of that, you need to have an earlier number in that sense that this right here, the double bond would be the second carbon as opposed to starting from here. Because if you start here, this would be one, two, three. So it's now going to be at carbon three, right? So you want to pick the earlier carbon, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this is the second one, right? And then this is the third one. So you want to have your double bond in carbon two as opposed to carbon three if you were to start from here. Does that make sense? So because these are two equal groups, right? In that case, you have a methyl group. So that means you can start here or here. It doesn't really matter. So if I'm starting from here, this would be carbon two and you have three, this is four and this is five. And then finally you stop, right? So at carbon two, right, you have a methyl group, right? So we're going to say that this is two methyl and you also have your alkene, right? So first of all, this is going to be pentene again, right? So this is two. At carbon two, you have your alkene, right? So it's pent because it's five carbons, right? That's your parent chain. And you have ENE -E as your suffix because you have a double bond in carbon two. Now you have two methyl and on top of that you have, let's see, in carbon five, right? So carbon five, you have bromo, right? So five bromo. So that's one of your side chains. And let's see. So we have five bromo, two methyl, and that's it, right? So in terms of naming, right? So first of all, you're probably wondering, so which one is going to go first? Is it the five bromo or the two methyl, right? So obviously these two are going to go in front of two pentene, right? But in terms of, I guess priority, right? The the five bromo would come first because even though they're equal groups, right? So we're looking at bromine and CH3, right? The alkyl group and the halogen, right? Or yeah, the halogen in this case, they're going to be equal in terms of the priority. However, in this case, because this is based in alphabetical order, that means the bromo will come first. That's why you have five bromo in front. And then you have two methyl, two pentene. Does that make sense? So two methyl, and then you have two pentene. And that's how you're going to name this. If you're based in Canada, you're probably going over this. If you're in grade 12, most especially, you're going over this in biology and in chemistry. So it's really important if you do have any friends, you know, who's taking chemistry, biology, or even like in college, right? Um, organic chemistry naming compound, it's very important. So you need to master that. Okay, if you do have any requests, you know, in terms of the content that you want to see more often, please let me know. Check out um, JanineTutor.com and send me a message. Okay, great. So 5-bromo-2-methyl-2-pentene. Okay, that's done. Let's see what they wrote. Yes, okay, so it's right. If you guys can see this. So they're saying it's 2-ethyl-1-pentene, which is right. And we have 5-bromo-2-methyl-2-pentene. And that's what they have here, which is right.